So what if the changes coming to the iPhone 15 were a bit more than we actually expected? Because yes, Ming-Chi Kuo just chimed in on some very interesting updates that Apple is planning for the iPhone 15. Elon Musk finally completed his goal of buying Twitter and he's uh, already making some very controversial changes. And Google just explained why the Tensor D2 is not so powerful, along with why they're pretty much okay with it. I'm Jaime Rivera and uh, well, listen, this is uh, Friday. I wasn't expecting news to go so crazy, but then Elon decides to do crazy things on Friday, in addition to bringing a kitchen sink to the office. This is Pocket Now Daily. The official news today begin with Elon Musk and Twitter because it seems like uh, this Latin American telenovela is finally coming to an end. After many months of negotiations, jokes, and tweets from Musk, it's reported that he just bought the company in a $44 billion deal and just instated himself as CEO just hours before the deadline ordered by the court. His first move as a CEO of the social media platform was firing top executives like Parag Agrawal, who was the company's CEO, the company's chief financial officer, and uh, even the head of legal policy, trust and safety. Right after Musk proceeded to tweet, the bird is freed. Last week, reports started surfacing that uh, he was planning to slash Twitter staff by 75% in an effort to pay down the company's debt burden. However, Musk later dismissed uh, these reports, saying that he would not cut the, that amount of employees, at least. Elon uh, then stated that the reason why he acquired Twitter is because it is important to the future of civilization to have a common digital town square where a wide range of beliefs can be debated in a healthy manner without resorting to violence. Then he ended his statements by saying that he believes that advertising, when done right, can delight, entertain, and inform, and that Twitter aspires to be the most respected advertisement platform in the world. Let us know if you like the news of the acquisition in the comments, because to be fully honest with you, to consider that speech in a country or countries that have become so polarized lately politically is definitely sort of naive, at least in my opinion, but we'll see. Now let's uh, get to Google and other sort of official news because they just made some interesting statements about their Tensor G2. Earlier this month, the company launched the Pixel 7 series with the new SoC as the main improvement over the previous generation. And boy, have uh, we got some positive changes. Google claims that the new chipset has improved the overall performance, AI capabilities, and efficiency. However, just like the first generation Tensor, the G2 lags behind its competitors like the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 and Apple's A16 Bionic and benchmark results. Thing is, it seems like the company isn't focused on those results and instead prefers to make people's lives easier. Senior Director of Product Management at Google Silicon said that the classical benchmarks serve purposes at some moment in time, but that the industry has evolved since then. Gupta added that uh, the company's main focus is ambient computing because in the end, that is what makes your life easier. She also added that Google is trying to push the chipset's AI capabilities because they feel like that is the approach that will deliver helpful experiences and honestly so far they're doing a great job because some of the photography phone call services and accessibility features that are found in the Google Pixel smartphones are just pretty awesome and uh, not available on other devices as of yet. Now let's switch on to Apple and their latest iPad, which I know just got launched and uh, is already giving us reasons to understand how Cupertino was able to keep the price down and uh, listen, you might not like it. According to a review made by The Verge, the device's USB-C port is actually not as fast as others. Currently, the spec seems to limit it to USB 2.0 speeds of up to 480 megabits per second for data transfers, making it slower compared to all other of the latest models and uh, weird given the chip powering it. Yes, we know this is the first base model with USB-C, but if you do the math, it's pretty much 
providing the same data transfer speeds of the ninth generation iPad with the lightning connector. To give you guys some context, the iPad Pro with M1 or newer is compatible with Thunderbolt 3 for data transfer speeds up to 40 gigabits. The latest iPad Air is capable of transfers up to 10 gigabits, and even the latest iPad mini can reach speeds of up to five gigabits. And uh, as we all know, the upcoming iPhones will support USB-C, so uh, let's just hope that Cupertino doesn't make uh, this a uh, differentiating factor between the regular and the Pro models of the iPhone 6. Oh, sorry, iPhone 15 series, because even that gets confusing. And finally, for the most interesting news today, let's switch on to Apple and that iPhone 15 series we just began discussing. But instead, let's focus on the first batch of credible rumors that uh, we might be getting. Uh, you know that once Ming-Chi Kuo shines in, it's hard to ignore the context. In a tweet, Kuo reported that one of the changes comes uh, to the button. Apparently the volume and power buttons on the two Pro models of the iPhone 15 series may adopt a solid state similar to the iPhone 7 home button. Quo also reported that the iPhone will feature additional Taptic engines on both sides of the phone to provide feedback to the user to make it seem like if they're pressing a physical button. Why is Apple doing this? Uh, listen, we have no idea, and of course this isn't new. Aside from the iPhone 7 and its force touch home button, Cupertino also uses the method on the Mac trackpads, uh, which do not have a physical move button. They simply mimic the feeling by being pressed with small vibrations. A few years ago, there were rumors about Apple watches making a switch to these kind of buttons, but that never really happened. Apparently the debut is gonna be with the iPhone at some point. And just to wrap it up, Quo ended his statement by saying that the buttonless design and USB-C will be two of the major updates to the iPhone 15, which don't really sound major, but in today's question is no, I mean, why do you think Apple is making this change? Because listen, in my case, I know the less moving parts, the better when it comes to manufacturing as a process. But uh, we've seen companies like HTC try this and fail with the side buttons before on that U11, which was just a dumpster fire. Uh, so listen, that being said, I know that this is Apple and Apple does a great job at these kinds of things. So it just weirds me out, but that's just me. Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram and follow me on my personal handles to see me watch crazy things on the internet. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.